Are you looking to break into the tech industry in 2025, but you're confused by all the conflicting information out there? Look, I get it. I've helped thousands of people just like you successfully transition into their tech careers. And at one point they were all in the same position as you. I mean, from complete beginners to career changes, I've seen it all. And you know what? Breaking into tech isn't as hard as most people make it out to be, but it does require the right strategy or this will just be another year that you don't make it into the tech industry. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the exact steps I've used to help thousands of people break into the tech industry. I'll cover everything from the skills you actually need so the ones that aren't overhyped and are actually going to get you a job how to build a skill stack and a resume that gets you noticed by top companies and top recruiters the hidden job markets that 99 percent of people overlook when they're looking to land their first job in the tech industry and of course a step-by-step -step roadmap on how you can actually land your first job so whether you're a complete beginner you're changing careers or you're just someone who's stuck in their tech journey this video is for you so to begin the video let's start by answering the question of why should people even want to break into the tech industry anyways. Well, as you can see, tech is pretty much all around us. Pretty much everything that you see in your day-to-day -day life requires technology in some shape, way, or form. And since tech is everywhere, being someone who works in tech can give you a lot of job opportunities and pretty much give you a job for the rest of your life if you learn the correct skill sets. It allows you to get into six-figure careers. Now, that doesn't mean that your first job in tech is going to pay you six figures unless you're an extreme outlier. But what it does mean is at some point, Point, you are going to hit six figures in your tech career if you just keep to upskilling, if you keep job hopping, and overall just be really hungry and put yourself out there. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States, the average salary for a software developer is $113,000 per year. So the six figure salaries that you're seeing online, they're not made up, they are out there. But you just have to have the right strategies to actually get there. I mean, I was personally able to go from working in a warehouse to landing an $80,000 software engineer engineering job in under six months of learning at the age of 16 years old. And by the age of 19, I was making well into the six figures per year. So there is a lot of growth and career progression that you will see in your tech career just by learning the right things, job hopping and putting yourself in the right places in order to get the right job opportunities. Another great thing about tech is you can work 100% remote. I'm working 100% remote right now. In my previous job, I was working remotely pretty much 99% of the time. So there are remote jobs out there. And I know you see the doom and gloom and bad news on social media saying that remote tech jobs are over, but that's simply just not the case. You can still find remote tech jobs. You just have to know where to look and which tech careers are actually going to increase your chances of you landing a remote tech job. And on a side note, honestly, one of the main reasons why people struggle to break into tech is because they keep listening to these naysayers. They think you need to have a degree to break into tech. They think you need to know somebody to break into tech. They think you need to be the smartest person in the room to break into tech and all of those things are just not the case all you need to do is build the right skills build the right resume and figure out how to get that resume in front of the right people in your job search there's also a ton of bad information out there on how to actually get into the tech industry you might be getting advice from people who have a degree and got their job from a school career fair or you might be getting advice from people who have a ton of experience in the field but haven't had a job interview in 10 20 years so you want to make sure you're listening to people who actually have helped people with no experience who started in completely different careers break into the tech industry in today's market and lucky for you you're in the right place because i've helped people of all different backgrounds and all different careers break into the tech industry just off of my youtube channel alone i mean i recently got a message on instagram that said i learned everything about coding now thanks to you and i'm now a professional web developer thanks to your videos you changed my life so i'm telling you if you follow my strategy strategies step by step this will work for you but you have to put in the work okay so now we know why we should actually want to get into tech in the first place high salaries remote jobs huge career progression cool a lot of you guys already knew that stuff. Now let's dive into the actual meat and potatoes of this video and show you what you need to do in order to land your first tech job. But before I dive into that, you need to realize that there are many fields of tech that you can actually go into. There's backend, full stack, cloud engineering, cybersecurity. And if you wanna transition into the tech industry, you need to focus on the fields of tech that don't require you to go back to school or get a degree to break into that particular field. And by far the easiest field to break into 
as a beginner who is looking to transition careers and get into tech as quickly as possible is front end development. It's what I personally learned, it's what I teach to all of my students, and it's what gets the best results, especially for career transitioners. But this doesn't mean that you have to stick to this field forever. Once you get a bit of experience in the industry as a front end software engineer, you'll then be able to pivot into any other field you want a lot more easily, whether that's back end or cloud or cybersecurity, now that you actually have that initial tech experience under your belt. So now we know, okay, in order to get into the tech industry as a beginner, front end development is probably what you should learn, right? But now the question is, how do you even go about learning front end development? What technologies do we learn? How do we learn them? How do we get a job, etc.? So for the rest of this video, I wanna give you a full exact step-by-step -step roadmap on how I would learn front end development in 2025 and work my way up to those six figure jobs. So the first thing you're going to do when it comes to learning front end development is learn HTML and CSS. HTML is what we use to define the structure and content of web pages. So think of it as sort of the skeleton or bones of a website. And CSS is what we use to make that content look pretty. So we use CSS to set the fonts, the colors, the heights, the widths, the spacing, the alignment of all the content on our page. And I want you to think of CSS as the skin, the hair, the clothes of a website. It's what allows us to customize our website and actually make it look unique. Now, when it comes to learning these two technologies, it's very important that you learn them at the same time because they work hand in hand. But now the question is, how do we actually go about learning HTML and CSS? Well, for every technology or coding language that I walk you through in this roadmap, I want you to learn them using my proven strategy that I call the 3x framework. Crash course, three tutorial projects, and then a solo project. This is a strategy that I personally developed after tons of trial and error on my own journey that I developed after working with hundreds of students. And I promise you, it's the quickest way to learn any technology, coding language, programming language, whatever. And for anyone who's already feeling a little bit lost or confused, don't worry, let's break down how this learning strategy actually works. So the first step of this learning strategy is to start by watching a crash course on whatever technology or programming language you want to learn. So in this case, we want to learn HTML and CSS. So we're going to go to YouTube and search for a HTML and CSS crash course and watch any video of our choice. And the point of the crash course is just to give you a basic understanding of everything you need to know about the technology that you want to learn. So don't get too caught up in the details. Just code along, take some notes and try to kind of understand everything that's going on. And once you finish the crash course, it's then time to take all the theory that you learned and actually learn how to use it practically in the real world. And how we do that is with the next step in the learning strategy, which is three tutorial projects. So again, since we're learning HTML and CSS, what we're going to do is go to YouTube and search for HTML and CSS tutorial projects. And we're going to code along with any three videos of our choice. Now, coding along with these projects is going to be tough and overwhelming at first. But once you get past that first or second project, you'll start to get a little more confident writing code on your own and it's at this point that you can sort of start pausing the tutorial coding ahead adding some extra features overall just slowly building that ability to write code on your own and once you finish coding along with all three tutorial projects it's time for the final stage of the learning strategy which is the solo project a solo project is a project that you build on your own and this is going to let you know whether you actually understand everything that you've learned so far or you don't and i recommend getting your solo project idea from chat GPT. By asking it something like, I've just finished learning HTML and CSS, give me a solo project idea that combines everything I would use it for in a real job. And if you can build out that project idea completely on your own, that is how you know you have a solid understanding of whatever technology you're learning. So in our case, once you finish that entire learning strategy with HTML and CSS, I want you to start back up at the top with the next technology we have to learn, which is going to be JavaScript. JavaScript is what pays the bills. It's one of the most in demand and popular programming languages in the world right now. And JavaScript is what we use to make our websites interactive. So I want you to think of it as the nerves or the neurons of a website. It's how we make it so that users can sign up and log in and how we add payments to our apps, how we can display real time data. All in all, JavaScript is what turns our websites from boring, static web pages to real functional web applications. Now, in terms of learning JavaScript, I want 
you to use the same learning strategy that we did for HTML and CSS. Start by watching a JavaScript crash course, which you can find on YouTube. Code along with three tutorial projects, which you can also find on YouTube. And then finish with a JavaScript solo project, which you can get from ChatGPT. And once you finish all three steps and you have a solid grasp over JavaScript, now it's time for our next technology, which is going to be React. So React is what we call a library that basically just brings HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all together in one place and makes them super easy to use together and so much easier to scale. And for that reason, companies who have to scale their applications absolutely love React. And there's a ton of jobs out there for developers who know how to use React. Now, in terms of how you should actually go about learning React, I want you to use the same three-step strategy we have been using thus far. I want you to start with a React crash course, then complete three React tutorial projects, and then finish with a React solo project you can get from ChatGPT. And a quick pro tip I want to give you is when you're building your React tutorial projects, make sure to find tutorial projects that use Firebase. It's something that's very easy to learn on the fly, but it's going to make the projects that you build with React so much more impressive. Now, once you finish learning React, we're going to take a little bit of a detour and spend some time learning Git and GitHub. So Git and GitHub are basically just tools that allow us to work together and collaborate with different software engineers on a single project. And it's extremely important to learn because this is what you're going to be using to work together with all your coworkers on the job. And thankfully, it's really easy to learn these two technologies. So you don't have to go through the whole three step learning strategy that we've been using so far. All you have to do, go to YouTube, search for a Git and GitHub crash course, watch it and then play around with it in a few of your projects that you've already built so far. And that should be more than enough to wrap your head around these two technologies. All right. By this stage, you have now learned all of the fundamentals of front end development. So that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Git and GitHub. These skills have been in high demand for years and they're not going anywhere. But obviously the tech world moves really quickly and there's always new trending technologies and tools and frameworks that people are building on top of these fundamentals that you have to stay up to date with. So off the top of my head, there are technologies like Next.js, which is a framework that is built on top of React to make it easier to use. We have TypeScript, which is built on top of JavaScript and makes that easier to use. We have Redux, which is built on top of React. We have Tailwind CSS, which is built on top of normal CSS, etc. So once you have an understanding of the fundamentals, the best thing to do is just to stay up to date with these new modern technologies that are popping up. And the good news is once you know the fundamentals, learning these new modern technologies is super easy to learn. So forget the whole three step learning strategy. All you have to do is watch a quick crash course on each of these technologies, use it in maybe one or two of your projects and bang, just like that, you know, everything you need to know about it. The hardest part of learning front end development is just learning the fundamentals. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. Once you get through those fundamentals, front end development actually becomes kind of fun and learning all the new technologies that come out after that is pretty easy. You just have to weather that initial storm of learning the fundamentals, which is going to feel pretty difficult if you haven't been exposed to coding before. But once you get through it, everything is smooth sailing from there. OK, so now at this point, you've actually learned all the tech skills that you need to know in order to bring value to a company as a front end developer. You've learned all the fundamentals. You've learned all the new in demand technologies. Now it's time for you to actually land the front end developer job that you've wanted all along. But here's the part where most people mess up. The biggest mistake that I see beginners make, and especially career transitioners like myself, is applying for front end developer roles at large companies for their first job. Guys, chances are if you are in a similar situation to what I was when you were starting out, no previous experience, no degree, you're working a dead end job and you're trying to make the switch, your first tech job is not going to be at a massive company like Google or Meta. First of all, their full time jobs look for people with way more experience than you have currently. And second of all, we don't qualify for their internships because we're not first year, second year, third year university students studying some sort of tech degree. Degree. That's not us. Instead, your best bet is to focus on applying to small to mid sized companies in your area, because one, the competition for these roles is going to be so much lower than the big tech companies Two, smaller companies are much more willing to bring on junior engineers who have way less experience in order to save on costs. And three, the interviews at these smaller companies tend to be way easier. So there's not going to be any six round three month interview process. But now the question is, where do you find these small to mid sized 
size companies to apply to. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to go to Google Maps and search for local software companies near me. And I want you to create a list of the 30 closest software companies to you. And what you're going to do is literally print out your resume and go into every single one of those companies, hand them your resume and introduce yourself. This is the strategy that I wish I knew when I was starting out. And it's a strategy that works so well, especially for career transitioners, because one, it allows you to bypass the hundreds, if not thousands of applicants you would be competing with if you had applied to the company through LinkedIn or Indeed. And two, if we're being completely honest, most of your competition just doesn't have the guts to do something like this. But you, on the other hand, as someone with skin in the game, as someone with years of experience in another career who has those transferable skills, whether it be working in sales or customer service or working in management, you're going to have the people skills and communication skills necessary in order to pull something like this off. Whereas the rest of your competition, which is mostly uni students in their late teens or early 20s, just don't have the experience necessary in order to do this. And that is your edge. That is how you're going to position yourself as someone completely different from the rest of your competition. This strategy pretty much guarantees that your resume is at least at the very least going to be looked at and considered. Whereas if you're applying online, your resume gets thrown in the trash before a real person even looks at it 80% of the time. This is the exact job search strategy that I teach to all my career changing students. For example, my student Roberto, who went from working a dead end customer service job to landing a 144k job offer in under six months. Or my student Aronai, who went from working as a teacher to landing not one, but two coding job offers using this strategy. So again, in order to land a job, print your resume, go into the offices of local software companies, hand them your resume and introduce yourself. I can personally guarantee you that you're going to get at least an interview and eventually a job offer from at least one of the companies that you go into. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on everything you need to know to break into tech in 2025. And honestly, we covered a lot in this video. You might be feeling a little overwhelmed by all the information and don't worry, that's completely normal. Remember, there is literally thousands of other people who have been able to successfully transition into the tech industry. And with the right guidance and the right direction, you can definitely make it into the tech industry as well. But here's the thing. This video is a great step-by-step -step starting point, but there's so much more information to cover if you want to fast track your way into the tech industry with front end development. And that's why I created something super special and free for people who are actually serious about breaking into the tech industry in 2025. And that is my free one hour and 30 minute front end development course. Just click the video that's about to pop up on the screen now, and you'll be able to watch my free one hour, 30 minute course where I break down absolutely everything that I know about the tech industry and how to land those six figure remote jobs. Or if you want to work with me one on one to transition into a 60 to 100k coding job in the next three to six months guaranteed, apply to join my coding bootcamp with the first link in the description. That is asapfrontend.com. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. and I'll see you in the next video.